reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Our God is an awesome God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning. It is wonderful to be here this morning. Today is the fifth Sunday in ordinary time. And in the gospel of today, Jesus heals the sick. And our first demons to make us whole again. And in our time, he continues to make us whole. I wish to thank you for your patience because we had a little challenge this morning. The priest could not come. And Brother Jerry just called me to come and stand in for the priest. So, thank you for your patience for not going away. And I want to assure you that God will come from and bless our families to Christ our Lord. Amen. So we do this much for all of us gathered here for our intentions and for all those who have asked us to pray for My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate their sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God that I have greatly seen in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Be Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Oh, 
pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that solely re relying on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke saying, is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Or not his days those of hurling? He is a slave who longs for the shade a hurling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I rise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are shifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. He heals 
heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls each by name. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. To his wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly, the wicked he casts to the ground. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast. For an obligation has been imposed on me. And woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have to recompose. But I, if unwilling, then I have been entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. The weak to the weak, I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have to share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. To 
On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grabbed her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases and drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages that I may pray there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is good, and all the time, yeah. The responsorial psalm this morning says, praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted. Praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted. And I know that we still have the broken hearted in our midst today. People who feel like Job in the first reading of today. Job said, my life, I know that I will not see happiness again. When I sleep, I wait for the dawn to come. I don't find any meaning in life again. I don't think I will see happiness again. And I want, to, I want to remind us that even currently, not only in the United States of America, all over the world, we see people in this state of mind. But what surprises me, or surprises many of us, is that it does seem that the world and its leaders look the other way. While our brothers and sisters pass through a lot of psychological and physical trauma, homelessness, hunger and poverty, disoriented, Father was saying this morning you know, in our mass today that so many struggling with so many demons. And I know that some people have tried to explain away demonic possession and all those stuff. But we experience them. 
Even if we explain, explain them over, I know in my 14 years or thereabout of, or as a priest, I have encountered them. They are there. I have seen those who were possessed with evil spirit. Some have even confronted me. And by the power of Jesus Christ, they were expelled from those they possessed. And so we are not going to go into the academic uh, a discourse about that. But in, in life experience, I have seen it. I have experienced it. I have come in contact with them. And so it's not only in the society of Jesus Christ, but also in my society, in American society, those things exist. And so we must have to appreciate that. We must have to face the truth. There was a day I was watching, not, not only one day, but I, I see that advert every day where they advertise for people to pay, I think, $19 or thereabout to take care of stray dogs, homeless dogs, which is beautiful, you know, very wonderful. They are our pets. But I did, I have not seen anybody who is advertising for some people to pay $10 or $15 to take care, especially in the televisions, to take care of the homeless around our society, to take care of those who are hungry. And they call those dogs American citizens. And we forget human beings who are created in the image and likeness of God. Those who are traumatized, broken-hearted, who are sick, nobody to take care of them. And today, Jesus gives us an answer. Jesus comes to the rescue in his own time. He healed Peter's mother-in-law, and they, they brought to him at sunset so many other people. And the Bible said that he healed some of them. He healed very many of them. He consoled them. He stood in the gap for them. And that is also what he wants you and I to do. Now we experience Jesus everywhere. We experience him in the Eucharist. We experience him in our prayers. We experience him in our, in, in our in, um, in other people. But what do we do for these, our brothers who are brokenhearted? When I was in the junior seminary, that's the high school, I was in the junior seminary back home in Nigeria, in our chapel, if you enter our chapel, you will see the crucifix, the cross of Jesus, very big, not molded but drawn. Then our rector then had an inscription because that crucifix has no hands and no legs, broken. There was no hands and legs. And then our rector wrote, You are my hands and my legs. The meaning of that was that Jesus says, I don't have hands again. I don't have legs again. You are my hands. You are my legs. And so we have to continue to console our brothers, to heal the brokenhearted, to talk to them, to talk to the lonely, those who have been rejected, those who have been abandoned. Our $1 or $2 or $3 can help them. Even a time to talk with them, to say, how are you doing today? Can go a long way to heal them. Yes, we might blame them because of, say, oh, it is because of their life. Oh, it's because of the way they have seen society. It's because of what they are taking. It's, yes, we can get so many beautiful reasons not to help them. But remember, Jesus once said, I came for the lost sheep 
of the house of Israel. So we have to go after them. And that's why Paul, in the second reading of today, talked about doing this, preaching the gospel willingly, working willingly to take care of these people, to preach the gospel to them. I am not being forced, because if I'm, I'm, I'm forcing myself to do it, that means I'm just a steward. But I have an obligation, an obligation to take care of these people. And so you and I have an obligation. We have to discomfort ourselves a little. He said, I'm going to discomfort, I'm not going to be comfortable. I have to discomfort myself a little. And that is a challenge. We have to discomfort ourselves a little for these our brothers and sisters. And I always love this part of the Bible, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, where Jesus talked about the parousia, the second coming. I love it so much. And we know that song. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brethren, that you do unto me. So my dear friends, I enjoy you. Go out there. In our neighborhood, everywhere you will see them. They have the mark of the Lord. They have the imago Dei in them. Do something for the brokenhearted. And may the Lord continue to bless us and bring us into his kingdom. Peace be with you. is for the uh, uh, creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and became man, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to join the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the Faithful. God has blessed us with the gift of life. So we now, we are to turn in all our needs. Our responsible, gracious Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the church, that we may be instruments of healing, reliving and suffering of those who are burdened with the illness and fertility and the offering support and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious Lord, Lord hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. For pastoral ministries and ministers, particularly those serving in areas of crime and violence, that God will guide and protect them as they accompany God's people with the gospel and the words of hope. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all in healthcare ministries, that God will work through them to bring healing and strength to all who seek their assistance. We pray to the Lord. Gracious, Gracious Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that the Spirit of Christ may renew the gift of life within them and bring healing to their body, their mind, and spirit for the affected and the rapid distribution of the COVID virus vaccine, that God will inspire the guide, those who are distributing, administering the vaccine and bringing it to the end of the pe pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, Lord, hear our God. prayer. For the members of Congress, that God will guide their deliberations on the budget and immigration and help them develop policies that honor the dignity of each person and promote the greatest good in our society. We pray to the Lord. 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 And for all prayers we hold in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. Our days rush up by us quickly, Lord God of all time. Grant us what we need to live life fully. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
bathroom communion. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, which will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for it. Sacrifice your side. This day be pleasant to you. Wash away my sins. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your heart more to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just. It is really right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we talk and we acclaim. <laughs> Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Yeah. 
In a seminar when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Ministry of Faith. We okay. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise and Perry, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Of the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace, peace. Um, do I need to carry the communion from there? Yeah. Okay. okay. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Make the wounded whole, 
There's power in his name. Jesus, the sweetest name I know. Jesus, I'll tell it wherever I go. Heal the sin sick soul. Make Yes, it is. There is healing. There's healing oh, in his more. name. The drinking water. There's more. There is power. There's power in his name. All you got to do is say it. There is power. There's power in his name. Let me hear say, Jesus, there is healing. There's healing in his name. There Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, war without end. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Saint Peter and Paul, pray for us. And all you saints of God, pray for us. The Lord is good. And all the time, God is good. Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that men one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we kindly say. I just wanted to come and wish 
our member and sister, Dr. Dorothy Williams, happy birthday today. Although she couldn't be here with us today physically, she is doing quite well. So I wanted to let the membership know that. And to let all of you, uh, if you wish to reach out and wish her a happy birthday on this special day, you can uh, contact Janora or myself and, and we'll be able to relay the telephone number to you to, to call her. So, amen. Also, please keep her son, Mike Williams, in your prayers. Thank you. First of all, I want to introduce Father Major Oso. Can we give him a round of applause for the great way he gave our sermon today? And if anybody doesn't know, Father Bob is on vacation, Father Tracy fell ill, and Father Oso was kind enough at the last minute to come from Corpus Christi and do mass for us. So one more time, let's give him a round of applause. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Um, we're all coming together as a cluster church, but if this doesn't say community and together, I don't know what does. Um, today is a cold, cold day. I want to say thank you for coming out. This is one of those days that tests your faith. <laughs> it really does. So we want to thank the people who are here. And as a matter of fact, I have cookie treats. Safe for COVID, they are pre-wrapped where you can have on your way out the door. Basically, just to say thank you and to say, well, you know, welcome. We appreciate you coming here. Um, Father Tracy, again, will be out for the rest of the week. If there's anything that you need, please call the office. The church office at St. Anselm's is open from 10 to 3, Monday through Friday. At St. Elizabeth, Tuesday through Thursday, 10 to 3. Again, you do need to register. We're probably going to get more people coming to church. And if you have not reached out to me and told me that you want to come to church one particular Sunday, I will not know and we may be full. We want to make sure that everyone who wants to come to church has a chance to come to church. Again, starting today, Mass is starting St. Elizabeth, 9 a.m., St. Anselm's, 11 a.m. We really appreciate you all coming out, and we'll have more announcements later. Thank you, and have a warm, blessed week. Thank you. All right, before the final blessings, I wish to thank all of you for welcoming me to St. Anselm's Catholic Church. I have not been here before, but I'm happy to be here. And I will always come if you call me. We are there at Corpus Christi. We will all eagerly come if there is an emergency and you require our services. Um, just like my sister said, I am from Nigeria. And I'm a chaplain in the military in Nigeria. I just came for studies to do my master's at Loyola University. So, and hopefully I'll be rounding up this, um, this spring by May or thereabouts. So keep praying for us and I'm available anytime, any day. So thank you and may God continue to bless you through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.